from the WLXI studios in Greensboro, North Carolina, it's Triad Alive. Proclaiming the gospel to the Triad area, giving glory to the Lord in word and in song on Triad Alive. And welcome to the program today. We're glad that you're along. Call somebody, tell them to tune in to Try It Alive. We've got some great guests that are going to be with us. Got some great music that's going to be with us. And I have my great wife that is with us. And uh, oh <laughs> that we're uh, uh, doctors, Harold and Susie Pope from Family Worship Ministries. But let me share something with you today. The Bible says that this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I want you to rejoice, not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. And uh, he'll make the difference in your life. So uh, stay with us. Our first guest today is going to be Charlie Liebert. He is an author and uh, a teacher, and he's more than that. And I want to get right into this. Charlie, it's so good to have you today with us. Uh, I, 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 want to he I want to hear the whole story today. I want to know where you came from and uh, how did you get out of where you were? Okay, I, was, uh, I, I grew up on Long Island in a small town and my parents took us to church most every Sunday. At 16, I remember sitting in the church and hearing the pastor preaching about the evils of alcohol and knowing that everyone around me had been at the yacht club over the night before and uh -huh. consumed large quantities. Jesus, help me. So as a 16-year-old, very impressionable, I walked out of the church. By the time I was 20, I was a hardcore atheist. I remember sitting in the Meadowlands in New Jersey, which were really meadows in those days, in, in a bar arguing about there can't be a God. I had a friend who lost his girlfriend at 18 and was consumed by alcohol and eventually took his own life. I couldn't see there was a God at all. I married a young Catholic girl, had two children, and came to Greensboro, North Carolina. When we came to Greensboro, uh, I was still a hardcore atheist. We came to Greensboro, my wife, who was an ex-Catholic, decided she'd go back to church. She didn't want to go back to the Catholic church, so she went to the Episcopal church and left me home with two young children. Well, that didn't last too long. <laughs> Charlie decided maybe he could go to church, so I, I started going to church. Now, nothing in the, in the Episcopal church ever really threatened me in, in terms of the gospel, but it was a nice social environment. Th things were really pleasant in that sense. And um, I had a friend, actually three couples, whose lives were different, very different, and I didn't know why. And uh, we had a short Bible study with them, and things changed a little bit because my marriage was going down the, down the drain. I was addicted to pornography, and I was having an alcohol problem. All those things were contributing to my life falling apart, and I knew that. I also knew I did, couldn't do anything about it. So uh, my wife encouraged me to go on this treat, retreat weekend. And I went on the weekend, and as I went on the weekend, they took away our watches so we couldn't keep trying, and they asked us three questions. What's your life about? Where are you going? And what's your purpose? I couldn't answer those questions. I mean, yeah, I had a wife, a dog, you know, two children, but that wasn't the answer. And I knew that wasn't the answer. And in Asheville, North Carolina, March 20th, 1977, I got down on my knees in the chapel. And as I got down on my knees, I remembered something. When I was single, living with a couple guys in New Jersey, we'd get a six-pack of beer and turn on Billy Graham and make fun of him. But that word remained in here. Mm -hmm. And I remembered him saying about being a lost sinner. I got down on my knees in Asheville, and I said, God, if you're real, and I wasn't even sure he was, you can have my life because it's totally screwed up. Well, God's true to his word. He took it. I came back to Greensboro, a new creature in Christ. Now, did they say something at this meeting that triggered that to get on your knees? No, they, I went in the chapel by myself. Okay. I, I went all, by, all alone, okay? I was really wrestling with this. I was wrestling with the Holy Spirit, of course. It didn't, right. I didn't really right. understand that, but that's what I was wrestling with. Right. And, and, and I didn't really understand that, and I went in there myself, and all these memories came back, mm -hmm. all these things about being lost and being a sinner. And, and, and that, that brought me to say, God, if you're real, you can have my life. And he took it. I came back to Greensboro, a new person. Now, I had a huge intellectual dilemma because now... I mean, I believed all that stuff about evolution, billions of years, all that, all that stuff. And now I read the Bible in Genesis chapter 1. It didn't say that at all. It said God made the world in six days, mm -hmm. six literal days. So it took me three years. I evolved from an evolutionist, atheistic evolutionist, to a recent creationist. After the three years, I became a recent creationist. 
you really did understand the, what the Apostle Paul said to the church that old things are passed away, passed away. and all, all things, things become are become new. new. You really worked through that, I can tell. And it was Romans 12, 1, where it says, renew your mind. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That got me, mm -hmm. okay? Because that was what was happening. I was renewing right. my mind. Well, I, 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 I began to grow in Christ. God took us almost immediately to Greenville, South Carolina. We spent three years there. And I really matured in Christ quite quickly because we were in a real good church. Right. I came back to Greensboro, and uh, coming back here, uh, we, we kind of wandered around for a while in terms of churches. But I kept growing. And I eventually took a retirement package in my mid-50s, went to work for Answers in Genesis for three years, and then went out on my own in my own ministry. My ministry is basically apologetics, teaching the Word of God. I was doing that about three years ago with a group of Christian businessmen. And this issue kept coming up. I don't witness because they ask me questions that I can't answer. I thought about that. Hmm. Questions you can't answer. How did Jesus handle that? I went back and looked at the Bible, okay? The Samaritan woman, the rich young ruler, the Pharisees, dealing with all those, all those groups. And I said, how, what did Jesus do? Jesus didn't answer the question. He went to their presuppositions. That's what this book is about. Right. Be ready to right. give an answer. Okay? It's about a strategy to get the question. Someone comes up to you and says, where'd Cain get his wife? Now, I have an answer for that question, but I'm not going to answer it right away. I'm going to say, why did you ask me that? If I answer it, will it change anything about your attitude about Christ? I'm going to take their spiritual temperature. <laughs> That's okay? good. Take I love temperature. that, yeah. They're cold. They say, I ask that because I think Christianity is stupid. Well, that's the end of the discussion, okay? There's no point in going much further. However, I'm always going to give a short testimony. Every time I, I encounter a question, I'm going to wind up with a testimony. Right. And the book actually outlines that, talks about how to give a short, medium, and long testimony. Now, this is... This is always be ready to give an answer. Okay, I'm going to hold this up and let them get a shot of this. Because this is mm -hmm. uh, very, very interesting. Yes, you know, I'm you. so glad to hear you address this. Because in the body of Christ, we are losing our young people because the adults have not had this experience that you're talking about. They don't know how to handle this. They don't know what to say. Teenagers have to be taught mm -hmm. the basic apologetic of Christianity. Why Christianity is true and why other worldviews are not. If right. they don't have that by the time they're 16, 17, or 18, when they walk out of the home to the first job or to college, they're going to lose their faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's happening to a large, a large part of them. But if they have that solid foundation, they can go out into the world and they'll, they'll survive. They'll do well. Because Christianity is unique among all world religions. All the world religions say God, the way we get to God is we reach up to him. Mm -hmm. Christianity says, no, you can't. You're lost. You're dead. Right. Only God can reach down to you yes. and pull you out of that yes. miry clay. That is so true. Yeah. So, so, so that's basically what, what the first book says. Now, I was having lunch with a friend of mine, and he said, that book sounds great, Charlie, but what about answering those questions? I said, well, I, I've had a website for over 20 years that's answered questions. It's called sixdaycreation.com. And, and I all got all these over 100 questions I've answered. And I've, and I've got the standard answers typed up and stuff at this point. And I said, well, Bob, maybe that's the second book. And that's the second book, Answers for the Hope That Is In You. Okay? That, that is, book has yeah. answers to those questions, particularly the four really difficult ones you encounter. Okay? The, one that, and the one that is most common is where did Cain get his wife? Mm -hmm. okay? There's also, also the one the materialist says that, well, if I can't see it, I won't believe it. Mm -hmm. right? And then there's, uh, what about the native in Africa? Does he, does, he, does he go to hell even though he never heard the gospel? All those questions are answered in depth. And then there's over 100 more answered in a fairly short, concise way to satisfy an unbeliever, but not a lot of depth, okay? Right. So that's the purpose of that book. That's your backup. That's your answers. But you've got first to employ the strategy. Right. And the strategy is to go for the presuppositions. I had a, I had a fellow that uh, read, read the book in what was still in manuscript form. Uh, and he said that to me. He said, now, when I talk to my unbelieving family and friends, I say, I'm going for their presuppositions. <laughs> <laughs> that is so good. Yeah. That is so yeah. good. Now, how long have you been in the ministry as far as teaching? Okay. I, when I took a, re well, be even before I took a retirement package, uh, when I was still working, right after I, about 
Five years after I was converted, I had a homeschool mom come to me and say, can you do something for our kids? I'd been teaching Sunday school. Right. So I started a ministry with homeschool students, and I did workshops and seminars all over the southeastern U.S. I've done over 100 workshops with children, okay, hands-on type workshops. And then I worked for Answers in Genesis once I retired. And then since then, I've been doing a lot of work in apologetics and working on these two books. How long did it take you to write these books? Well, it was three years ago when I taught them, when the question came up, okay? Mm -hmm. And it took me about two and a half years. About two wow. and a half years. I've, got one, I've got one more book ready to go, but I don't have the finances to do it yet, okay? Uh -huh. my, my, my third book is going to be, you ready for this now? Uh, yes, I yeah. am. Okay. I'm holding you. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's about Darwin. Wow. Without three miracles, Darwin's dead. I talk about something from nothing, life from dead stuff, and going uphill in a downhill universe. Oh, well, I know this. You are a gift to, to the body of Christ. Let me because ask you, we need this. Let me ask you something, Charlie. And, and, and I know this is off the, the, the uh, cuff here. Yeah. What do you think most atheists are really thinking? Do you think that in the back of their mind, because you were one, that they really thought, okay, there is a God, but I'm just not going to talk about that? No, they really believe there isn't. And the problem that they have is they're a logical contradiction. Atheism is not logical. Right. Because they say there's no, no uh, absolutes in the universe. And then they say there's no God. That's an absolute. Mm -hmm. You right. can't have it both ways. Right. Their actual worldview is a contradiction. When I point that out to an atheist, I, he, he eventually will confess, well, maybe I'm just going to be an agnostic. Say, mm. I don't know and right. don't care. It doesn't matter. Right. But atheism itself is foolish. And God says that. And God calls them fools in the Bible. I'm going to ask you another question yep. because I'm, I'm very interested in this. Do you think that our public schools are teaching in a roundabout way, that there is no absolutes. It's not a roundabout way. It's a direct way. Okay. I, was being, I was trying to be nice. No, it, it's, okay. it, it's a but, direct way. Yeah. Okay, but do you think that this is a stem off of athe athe people being atheist? Yes. It, and it, that's it, where... It, 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 it's that's the basic humanist philosophy, starting with Dewey. Right. And it just, it just per permeates the whole system, and it runs the system. Right. Because religion is, is banned, not allowed. Yeah. So yeah. But you know the saddest thing about it, we have many Christian uh, people on, Christ, uh, on the school boards, yes. all across, and they don't even recognize it. It's like they don't they see don't, it coming. They don't see it. They don't see it. Yeah. You, you can even see this in, in, in the, the way education is structured today, okay? Mm -hmm. They've gone away from phonics in, in grammar, and they're teaching what's called look say. Right. They've gone away from the absolutes in, in mathematics, and they're teaching what's called common core. Right. It's the same thing. The absolutes to what? The numbers and the letters. You ignore those and go above that, and what happens? The system falls apart. Exactly. You can't educate without absolutes. And that's I love, the point. Make that statement again. I you love it. You can't that. educate without absolutes. Yeah. You must have them both in the context of the subjects and the context of morality. Right. God gave us absolutes. Right. And they're clear. Yeah. Mm. Wow. That is so yes. good. Just yeah. looking at your book, I can't wait to get in and read it. And I, I encourage every one of you, you need, as a Christian, you need to know these answers. Yes. Yeah. We, we need to be in, uh, learned. We need to be, uh, we need to study. Mm -hmm. We need to show ourselves approved. And the body of Christ has failed at that. And thank you for stepping well, up to the plate. Yeah. Well, the, the, the whole point of the, the books is basically the strategy. Mm -hmm. Don't get intimidated by the question. Right. Go to the presuppositions. Right. right. And don't forget, every time, give the gospel. Always give the gospel. Mm -hmm. And if you give the gospel by a testimony, what happens is what? They can't challenge a testimony. They can't argue with a testimony because I'm telling you what happened to me. Right. That's the best way to present the gospel. Mm -hmm. This is what happened to me. God came and changed my heart. In fact, at work, when I, after I, I went to Greenville for three years and then came back to Greensboro. And when I came back to Greensboro, uh, I sat at the lunch table with the same old guys I sit with before. You know, in the old Playboy reading Beer Drinking, Charlie's dead. He's gone. Right, right. Okay, he's, he's gone. <laughs> and, and, and they didn't really understand that because, because right after I was converted, God moved us. So now, now, now they, used to, they used to joke at the table, old Charlie, new Charlie. 
<laughs> and every once in a while, I'd fall and tell a bad joke, and what? They'd say, oh, Charlie's back. No, he's not. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. Uh, my, that is so good. It, it, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, it, to be able to share this type of information yes. to believers should be an eye-opener mm -hmm. that it's like, oh, my, I didn't realize that this is how they fail. This is what happens. This is how the change takes place. You have to understand, inside an atheist's mind, there's turmoil. Mm -hmm. Because he's rejecting something that, back there, he knows is true. Mm -hmm. And he's got to suppress that. We're in Romans 1, 2, and 3 now, okay? Right. He, he's suppressing that truth. And, and he, he, does, he, he knows it, but he doesn't. And I, I mean, I, I, can, I can remember times when I was struggling with that you know, as an atheist. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm thinking about, you know, wow, this is quite an amazing universe. Uh, happened by accident. But I never really questioned it. Right. Because I had what? That was the thing I believed. There was mm -hmm. no God. Yeah. That is so amazing. I, I'm telling you, this is so powerful to me because we need answers. We yes. as Christians need, you know, and one of the greatest things that I've heard you say is when you turn the TV on and you made, were making fun of Reverend Billy Graham. Right. And the Word of God, though, is alive. Came, it's powerful. Came right through. Yeah. Came right through. And it's what? sharper than any two-edged sword. sword. Amen. Let me ask you this. What do you expect as far as helping Christian people? What do you expect these books to do? I believe this book can transform the church's witness to the world. And I believe that because I believe that one of the big stumbling blocks people have is they get asked that question, they get flustered, and they shut down. Mm -hmm. They don't go on to Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's what you need to do. You need to go on to Christ. So this gives them a way to get there. You don't answer the question. You ask another question. Jesus did this all the time. Every time he dealt with anyone, he asked some questions. Mm -hmm. Or he told them something about themselves. Jesus always used, always used that strategy. In fact, the last chapter of the, the first book there is uh, biblical support. It has a whole section on the Bible and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, one of the illustrations I use in there is, is Lazarus. Lazarus is dead. Men are dead in their sin. Mm -hmm. In order for the man to come alive and Lazarus to walk out of the grave, what has to happen? First thing's got to happen is what? The Holy Spirit's got to bring that body back to life. That's the first step, okay? God's got to bring life to that body. Mm -hmm. Then Lazarus can hear Christ's call and come out of the grave. So you pray God would enliven the person to hear. Jesus talked about this all the time. Give them ears to hear. Mm -hmm. right. Once they have ears to hear, they can hear. When they hear, do, then what? They've got responsibility to get off that cold stone and walk out of that grave. Mm -hmm. That's a great illustration of how the gospel works. Uh, Charlie, this has been so interesting, and, and I challenge all of you today, get these books. How do they get them? Okay, they get, they get them through the website, yourchristiananswers.com. Uh -huh. Okay, they're, they're, you can buy them separately, or there's a package. You can buy a package deal, okay, either way. Right. And you can buy them directly on the website. Just push the buy button, and it'll go right to uh, PayPal, and you can handle the transaction right there. I'll mail them to you. If you're local... And you want, to, uh, you want to get them and either come by and pick them up or have me give them to you, meet you somewhere or something, you get a $2 rebate. Okay? All right. That is that, awesome. Uh, Charlie, it has been so interesting to have you. Um, it, it's just, I, I can't stop right now and read this, you know, but I, uh, I am just so, so interested in this. And again, Charlie, it's been good to have you on the program today and uh, look forward to hearing more about this and more about you uh, in the future and how you and your books can affect the Christian world. Thank Cause, you. Because I believe it will. I, I really appreciate the opportunity yeah. to be here. And uh, we know that uh, information like this will change your life, and we encourage you to do that.